Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk about three goals you need to set before you retire. Okay. Uh, I would say 90% of Canadians will set these goals after they retire. Um, and let me tell you, if you set these goals before you retire, they're going to make retirement so much easier. You're going to be able to enjoy the first, especially first five, 10 years of retirement, because you really have those goals set in place. You've been able to plan ahead for those, and it's just going to create a way better situation for you. So let's go through those three goals. The very first goal we recommend you need to have, and ideally you want to set this about five years before retirement, is have a monthly budget. Okay, so a lot of you, as you get closer to retirement in your 50s, early 60s, you know, this, the idea of having a budget has kind of gone away, right? You have a budget in your 20s, 30s, 40s, maybe you're raising kids, you don't have the income you have, you have a big mortgage. You have to run a budget just to get by and not go into debt and make sure you're saving, okay? But as we get closer to retirement, a lot of times, you know, I'll ask, you know, our, our 50, 60 year old clients, you know, what's your budget look like? I have no idea. I'm saving, you know, I'm not going into debt, seems to be good, which is, is not a bad answer. But then when you shuffle to retirement, if you don't know what you're spending, how do you know how much you need to actually take out of your accounts? Okay. It's a bit of a black box. So, you know, it's great to have a bit of a budget leading up to retirement. You know, again, three to five years before retirement, have an idea what you're spending, where your money's going. Now, remember, Part of your budget right now leading up to retirement, if you're not quite retired, is hopefully savings, right? You're saving money into RSP, TFSA, whatever it is, you're saving for retirement. So obviously that part of your budget is going to be obsolete when you hit retirement, okay? Um, you're going to look at spending a lot less in uh, you know, household stuff, traveling, local traveling as far as gas goes and that kind of stuff. We, uh, I would say after you take off your savings amount, the rest of your budget, you know, you probably need anywhere between 50 and 70% of that budget in retirement. More earlier in retirement, less later in retirement, okay? We have clients in their 80s and 90s. We have a client turning 97 next month. It's hard for them. When you hit your kind of mid 80s on, it's tough to spend more than a couple thousand dollars a month as a couple, okay? Individually, my one uh, client that's 97 next month, I doubt he spends a thousand dollars a month. There's just, you're not doing anything. Okay. So there's these kind of stages of retirement. We've done many videos and talking, you know, to, to, at length about that as far as the, the go, go stage, the slow go stage and the no go stage. Okay. And there's different income needs in that. But what you need to know is what's your budget heading into retirement and that go, go phase might be 70, it might even be 80, 90% of your current budget and it will tail off from there. But again, you have to have a starting point. So work through that budget. I know it's budgets are awful. They're boring, you know, they're, they're terrible to do. They take time. It's not a fun task, but what's also not fun is heading into retirement, not knowing how much to pull, how much you can pull, how much you need. So do that task, spend an hour or two putting that budget together, figure out what you're currently spending. And that will really help set the guidelines as you enter retirement and figure out how much you need to pull out and how much, you know, how long your money will last and, and when you can retire. Now, before I jump into goal number two, I just want to say if you're sitting on the sidelines, you're getting close to retirement and you're not sure what retirement looks like, how much you can pull out, you know, how long your money will last, when to start taking stuff out. Okay, we work with a lot of you um, and really you have no idea when to take, take accounts out. So RSP, TFSAs, how to draw down accounts, create tax efficiency. Um, you know, not many financial firms will actually go through that process with you. You know, they love to manage your money, but they don't really like getting into the nitty gritty and actually creating a plan for you. That's what we find. That's the feedback from you guys. If you need a plan, if you feel like, look, I feel like I'm doing okay, but I, I need confirmation or I need a plan in general or my spouse or partner needs confirmation that my plan is actually correct. These are all the things that we hear. I'll put a link below to our financial planning services. So it's parallelwealth.com slash planning. Okay. Um, go to, go to that website. It talks about our planning services. We have fee for service planning options. Uh, if you're looking for investment advice and financial planning, we have that as well. Again, we don't use this channel too much to push our services. We want to give you free content. We're, we're here to help Canadians, but I know a lot of you because we talked to a lot of you, you need help. You want help. You're not sure where to go. We're happy to help you. Uh, we'll put the link below, check it out. And hopefully, uh, we can connect by phone and move forward from there. So goal number two needs to be your retirement date. Okay. You need to set a retirement date. Now there's a lot of facets to this, right? Um, how much money you've saved, you know, what your pension looks like. A lot of you, if you have a defined benefit pension plan, you're going to have an unreduced and a reduced pension. 
break those numbers down. What makes the most sense for you when you combine it with all the other assets and income that you're going to have, right? Um, that's where putting a plan together, whether you do it yourself, your financial advisor, whatever it is, make sure you have a clear plan in place so that you know that, you know, if I take my unreduced pension, it's still enough money to get by retirement. I'd like to retire early. It makes sense. Now, a lot of you don't have defined benefit plans. You're saving up RSPs. Again, there has to be this kind of marriage of the two as far as when you like to retire and when you're able to retire. Okay. So make sure you put in the effort to, to put that plan together so that the age uh, really matches up with the money and that you can, when you pull the trigger, again, you want to retire once, not twice, right? And we've talked to a few of you that have had to retire twice. In fact, on the phone yesterday, I talked to someone that retired twice. They've hired us to put a plan together so they don't have to retire a third time. So, um, if that's you, you know, make sure you have a clear plan in place so that you don't have to retire twice. So, you know, a lot of you will retire really early, 50, 51, 52. You think you have enough and you realize, you know, you didn't. And you hit your 60s, you know, it opens up and you realize that you need to kind of get back into the workforce or change your lifestyle, whatever it is. Have a good plan up front and you won't run into that, okay? Again, you need to understand how much money you're going to need, how much you're going to spend. That's why you need that budget to start with. Then work backwards from there. I did a video not long ago that talks about, you know, you may not have a choice on your retirement date, which is absolutely true. Probably about 50% of you was the stat are not going to get to choose your retirement date. And that's why it's so important to save, 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 save. Because if you are forced into early retirement, you know, you've, you've worked hard. Don't leave the last two or three years to build up the big nest egg, you know, save constantly, use this compound interest to your benefit and build that nest egg as best as possible. But you really need to figure out where the age and the money come together. Now, on the flip side of this, a lot of you work longer than you need to. You've saved enough already, but you keep working because you've never put a plan together. And the reality is you could retire today, but your plan is to retire for two more years. That two more years may make no financial impact to you at all in retirement. You already have enough money. Those two years are just adding stress to you. They're taking years off your life. Um, you're not able to uh, you know, travel, do the things you want. I know a lot of you have extended uh, your retirement because of COVID, and I get that. You know, you can't go anywhere, you can't travel, it might as well work, uh, it keeps you busy, keeps you out of trouble. That's a totally different story. Now, if you're in a financial position to retire and you have things to do and you'd like to retire, make sure you have that plan in place. Know that you can retire. Again, you need to run those numbers, set your retirement date, make sure it's realistic, and it can sustain you for the rest of your retirement years. Now, the third goal you need to set is housing, okay? So you may live in a big house. It may be, you know, a house you raise kids in or just a bigger home in general. Now, as you get older and into retirement, you have to walk through a few steps, okay? If you're planning to spend, you know, four or five months a year down south or in another country, does owning a large home in Canada make sense? Does it make sense to get maybe a condo, more of a, a turnkey solution where you can kind of lock it up, leave it, it's simple, it's easy? Um, you know, all these things need to be in consideration. Do you have a rancher? Maybe you want to have something with no stairs down the road. You have to plan ahead for that. Um, now there's again, two parts to this as well. Part one is, does it make sense to have the house? Okay. Maybe you can afford to keep the house till the day you die, but does it make sense to, and if you're going to downsize, that means there's going to be a lump sum into your retirement pool at some point. So what are your estate plans? Are your estate plans to pass it to kids? you know, grandkids, nieces, nephews, charities, whatever it is, that needs to be built into your plan. Again, there's a big cash injection. Make sure you plan for that. A lot of you that we do plans with, you might need to sell your uh, real estate down the road to fund retirement, okay? So you need to make sure that you understand that, you know, how much can you spend in that go-go phase based on a downsize down the road, okay? You might actually hit your mid 70s with very little investments left, and then you have the big cash injection from sale of your home, you top up your TFSAs, um, you know, a non-registered account and you have more cash flow again. So again, there, that plan has to come together. So if you are planning to downsize because of financial reasons, make sure you have a plan together so that you're spending enough or as much as you want to in those go-go phases. You don't want to spend less because you're worried about running out of money, not realizing the impact that that cash injection can have down the road. Again, a lot of you downsize, not because of the financial, but because you don't want to have a big house. You want a turnkey solution. Um, you, you just don't want to clean, you know, that. I sit, sit on financial plans, you know, presenting them to uh, husband and wife often. And the wife says, no, no, we're downsizing because I'm done cleaning the house. Right. I get that. Like no one wants to clean a three, 4,000 uh, square foot home 
in retirement. You want to enjoy retirement, not cleaning a home that you're not using. So, you know, consider that. So when you look ahead to retirement, what does the housing situation look like? You know, does it make sense to downsize? When is that? Do you need cash out of your home to afford retirement? All this needs to come into your plan, okay? So make sure you consider housing as part of your retirement plan. Again, whether it's a financial need or just a lifestyle need. So these three goals, they sound simple, they sound basic, but trust me, 99% of you are not doing this before retirement and it leads to issues in retirement, okay? If, if all of you follow these three simple goals and a lot of you are saying like, Adam, why do I need to budget? I'm gonna stay in my house. I know I'm gonna retire at 65 because I have a defined benefit plan. Like th this isn't helpful at all. Go through the process. It will be helpful because trust me, a few years into retirement, you're gonna wish you had run a budget, you knew what you could spend. You know, maybe you haven't taken trips that you could have afforded to take, or you took trips that you couldn't afford to take. You didn't have a plan, you didn't set out goals, and thus you've kind of derailed your retirement early into retirement, and now you're gonna to have to put a band-aid on it. Not a great solution to have, okay? Run through a budget, understanding what you're spending. You know, make sure you look at retirement date. Again, your budget, what you've saved in retirement date, all need to come together. It's a it's a pie, it's, it's a puzzle that you need to put together, okay? Um, and then again. Lastly, your housing situation. Is it, you know, are you gonna sell a house or downsize the house for financial? Or maybe it's a lifestyle need, or maybe you plan to live in your house till the day you die. And if you're forced to downsize or, or move out of there, it's a bonus, maybe it's money that you need for a care home, something like that. But have a plan, walk through these three steps, personally with your spouse or partner, and, and just, you know, go through that. What, what do these things look like? So that when you hit retirement, that plan is in place and those goals are set. And again, some of those goals, retirement date, budget, that needs to be done three to five years before retirement. Housing, you can leave a bit, but you have to understand, are we forced to sell our house down the road because we need the money? Or are we gonna be, you know, have flexibility to sell if we need to sell? Those are things you should have answers to before you enter retirement. So thanks for joining us in this video. Again, we wanna help you guys out. Just make retirement so much easier. And trust me, these three goals, again, they sound basic. Go through the work, it will greatly help you. You'll thank me in a year, five years, 10 years, whenever you retire, that you've kind of walked through this process, okay? Again, sometimes you have to really just keep it kiss, keep it simple, stupid, right? It, it really does follow through, keeping your life easier. So sometimes simple is important. And in this video, that's what it's all about. Keep it simple. Follow through with these three goals and I promise you retirement will be much easier than it would have been otherwise. So thanks for joining us in this video. Uh, hit the thumbs up if you enjoy these videos. It really does help get these out. We appreciate you uh, watching these and we'll see you in the next one.